This is Candace too. I got to go to Briar West for my first time ever, and I wanted to unbox these two models that I got while I was there. I've been a lifelong fan of Briar, but fell out of the hobby for the past 30-ish years or so. I'm basically brand new to everything. I jumped all in for this event. I signed up for a class, the swap meet, I even signed up for the Youth and Novice Model Show despite not knowing you could even show model horses until like a month ago. Briar West is an event hosted by Briar that brings aspects of the model horse hobby closer to fans out west who aren't able to get to Kentucky in the summer for Briar Fest. This year, Briar West 2022 is being held about 8 hours away from me in Denver, Colorado, which is much closer to me than Kentucky. I know two whole people in this hobby, and neither one are going, so essentially, I'm getting in my car, by myself, driving a full day to a place I've never been, where I don't know anyone, and have no clue what I'm doing. Yep. Let's go. I just saw Baldy go. This is me talking about what's in store for today, but I'll just cut to the point. Day one pretty much consisted of stable mate painting and the open show for experienced showers, which went all day long. I've got a few clips, but first wanted to dive a little deeper into what Briar West is. If you've ever been to a gym fair or a comics convention, you'd recognize Briar West works in the same way. They need a host expo. For 2022, they used the Rocky Mountain Horse Expo to get vendor space, just like you'd see different vendors at any other convention. Inside Briar Space, they had a retail table, hosted stable mates painting for any attendee of the RMHE, and the classes and shows for Briar West ticket holders. This meant you needed a ticket to Briar West, a ticket to the RMHE so you could get into Briar West, and in my case, a parking pass. Anyway, Let's get back to day one. Because I had a ticket to the RMHE, I could have checked out all of the other things the expo offered, but instead I went for a quiet lunch by myself and then took some time to write. After I got into my day one loot. Here is my day one haul. The glossy Lionel celebration model, very pretty, is COA. Briar was handing out these cute pencils and big pinback badges. I chose BB since he's my favorite. And I bought two surprise blind bags, which I will open right now. Mini minis. This one is Ollie.
table mates is the quarter horse. Day two is a busy one with stable mate painting, artist meet and greets, hobby Q&A, classes for ticket holders, and at the end of the day, the swap meet. adorable little blanket came in a goodie bag from Briar. There's my stable mate that I painted. Uh, Heather was there, one of the mares. So I got a pin and I will open these two blind bags that I bought. Here's my little pony. I'm kind of proud, honestly. For craft paint and a used old brush. I think she's not so bad. Okay, blind bag number one. I got a unicorn. A Coralie. 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 Cute little pink thing. And the stable mate. Ruby and Paso. My Highland has her blanket on. So cute. So, yeah, so this is me selfie monologuing about how I blew it with my showstring. That's the group of model horses you have for shows. If you don't know about showing models, which was news to me too, I might make another video about that. Anyway, here I'm saying that instead of giving myself time to properly prepare a good show string, I ran around the house the day I left town and rounded up all the models I'd been thinking about showing, including some models new in box models that had never been removed from their box and that didn't go well. So my first NRFB was this beautiful black Andalusian who's been in his box since 2004 and he's the variant with dapples. His front side is so pretty but when you turn him over, box rub. And he has a tie rub on his pastern. And again, this time with an adorable Alba, a cute bay mare on the vintage Clydesdale mold, who would have been my only model in the draft breed class. Oh, it's so sad. Okay, third horse removed from box. And one more time, my catch me 
who I handpicked for nice dappling, turned out to have a shiny on his hip and a pink goober on his offside. Do not try to put your showstring together in a hotel room. Yes! Well, my showstring went from 10 horses in eight classes down to seven and a half-ish horses in seven classes. Here's who made it. LG, I'm gonna give Catch Me a Shot, Midas, a fox trotter, an LP for fantasy, Hal as a stock horse, Bear as a TWH, and a cute Paloma. I've gotta figure out where to place her and Midas. I've gotta figure it out fast because the show is first thing in the morning. Day three is already here. Stablemate painting continues, the youth and novice show is taking place, and I had no idea what to expect. There is so much paperwork and research and thought that goes into these shows, and I didn't know that. I was really nervous. There were also additional artists available for the meet and greet. I did have a chance to chat with Stephanie Blaylock, the artist behind Vermeer's incredible color, and she was wonderful in sharing some of the tools that she uses. So, the novice show. I could not sleep the night before, so I couldn't wake up that morning. My takeout breakfast was late, I missed a bunch of lights on the way to the park, and as I'm running across the ice from parking to the expo center, I'm sloshing hot espresso all over my hand, all over my models, since, you know, they're in a laundry basket. And I get to the show late. Shout out to the lady with a baby in a stroller who gathered up some of my things and walked them to the show with me. Erin was really nice, even though I was running late, and checked me in. I found an open spot in the very back and started unwrapping and dusting everybody off. No, I didn't have any of those fluffy brushes, and no, I didn't have any touch-up materials, which I didn't even know were allowed. Nearly all of my models are old, and none of them are flashy. Not all of these novice showers are kids, but it looks like all of them know what they're doing. I feel 100% totally out of my element. When a class you're participating in is called, you walk your model up to the ring, stand them nicely, dust them off, arrange their tag, and wait. Judging begins. Ribbons are awarded in first through sixth place. The class is announced pinned, and you go pick up your model and award, if you got one. For me, well... No ribbon. Then, more judging. No ribbon here, or here, nope, no, no, nothing. Just when I had emotionally given up, surprise, oh LG, you did it! Third place doesn't get you callbacks for division champion, but this golden ribbon made me so happy. I learned a lot and know just how much effort and preparation goes into these shows. Lastly came the Stablemate Painting Contest. I think this was initially set up for the Briar artists, but in the end, anyone could participate. You had 90 minutes to use whatever was left of paints and brushes from the weekend, and then Kat and Erin picked winners. Here's my loot from the very final day of Briar West. Show participants got a sheet of stickers. There's my name badge and my ribbon. Good job, LG. 21 years old and won third place in a giant class of flashy thoroughbreds. Here's my stablemate from the painting contest 
who didn't turn out as well as I hoped since the bristles fell out of my brush and I was using poster paint, but it was still really fun to participate. Oh, and there is the hoof of the very special model I bought during the swap meet, who I will show you just as soon as I get home. And that officially ends my Briar West experience. I stayed one extra night at the hotel and took a slight detour on the way home. I've got the show ponies riding shotgun, all cozy in their baby blankets. Made a stop for some voodoo donuts. And now, I'm gonna go see Buffalo Bill's grave. I admit, I didn't know much of anything about William F. Buffalo Bill Cody before I came here. I'll read some things found on the various signs around the grounds. He advocated for American Indians and women's equal rights. He called for preservation of the bison, wild animals, and wild places like the Grand Canyon. He rode in the Pony Express, fought in the Civil War, and scouted for the army. He hunted bison to feed railroad workers and began every performance of his show, Buffalo Bill's Wild West, with the Star Spangled Banner long before it came the national anthem. He is buried here with his wife, Louisa Maud. The sign says, in 1917, as he lay dying in his sister's home in Denver, he recalled the view from Lookout Mountain and asked his wife to bury him there. The museum was actually started by Buffalo Bill's unofficial foster son, Johnny Baker, in 1921. I didn't go into the official museum, but I did go into the gift shop. It was enormous. And it just kept going. If you wanted it, they had it. Except an Austin Sheriff badge. Sorry, Austin. Oh, heck yes. Zoltar is here to give you the wisdom of the ancients. Do with it what you will. Destiny is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. It is not a thing to be waited for. It is a thing to be achieved. Create your destiny wisely, my friend, and surrender a bit more wealth for more instruction from Zoltar. It was a beautiful day driving home from Denver, and I am so grateful I had the opportunity to attend Briar West. It was my first in-person Briar experience ever, and I had a great time. Big thank you to my husband Austin and my mother-in-law Renee for everything they did to provide me this weekend. Let's do the celebration model first. It comes with a certificate of authenticity. This is Lionel, who was a flagship model in 2020. Briar glossed just 250 of them as a celebration model for Briar West attendees. He's on the Cantering Warmblood mold by Morgan Kilborn, which was first issued in 2017 as True North. A lot of people were commenting on the shimmer in his paint, and actually, the regular Lionel has it too. Speaking of, here is Glossy with Matt, just to see the difference. And this guy... I kind of still can't believe I have him. Thorny! 
Thornycroft was the Briarfest volunteer model for 2021. So only those selected to help during Briarfest last year were given this model. According to a magazine Briar mailed out, Thornycroft is limited to 200 pieces. He's on the Desitato mold by Christina Lucas Francis, first issued in 2012. He's got these really pretty Rabacano markings, and his shading and his face are all just so nice. His belly says Briarfest 2021, and I was hoping to somehow get one of these guys from the moment I saw him. I have to give a huge thank you to both Maggie and Heather for making it possible for me to finally own this guy. Whoops. Okay, where are we? What are we talking about? Ah, that, you edit that. What was I gonna talk about? Something in there's gotta be good enough. And today's episode is brought to you by Under the Table Forts. Yeah.